Okay, so I've got a question here from Karen Bradbury. She says, Hi Jamie, really looking forward to hearing all of the album, especially Good Morning Heartache, which I adore. I'm wondering if there was a single thread linking the choices of songs or if it's just a random selection of much loved tracks. Well, uh, Karen, the way this album came about, a bit different to how I normally do it, but um, I've been doing this BBC Radio 2 radio show now for four years and uh, I've gotten to meet lots of people that I'm a fan of, uh, particularly on the British jazz scene. I've got to meet them and kind of chat with them in a room and chat to them about their influences and what they like. And one of those people was Nostalgia 77, the producer who works under the name of Nostalgia 77. His name's Ben Lambden, Benedict Lambden. And uh, we really hit it off. We got on really well in the interview and I've been a fan of the music he's been making for some time. And we agreed to do some work together. Uh, we just decided to book some days in the studio. Um, Ben also ended up working on my Momentum album as well for a couple of tracks, but we thought we'd make like a... We definitely wanted to make a jazz record, like a, a record with um, standards on as such, in a, in, a, in a jazz way, you know, all the band in one room and, and playing like a jazz record. Um, but in terms of the choice of the tunes, it was something that we just kind of pinged back and forth, you know, over email, we'd send each other ideas and track ideas. And uh, Ben is a bit like me, he's, he's a crate digger, he's someone who really digs around for the less obvious tracks and um, or at least ones that haven't been done too often and in arrangement styles that are not necessarily as popular these days as well so we dug really into New Orleans, we dug into the blues, we dug into Ray Charles, Nina Simone, Sarah Vaughan, Billie Holiday um, and did these particular type of arrangements that were uh, more talkative, uh, more serving of the song rather than just serving the singer. Um, and, uh, you know, in the end it just, it just seemed to link them all together. Even though I included a Sufjan Stevens song on there as well and a Randy Newman song, they all seemed to fit into the same uh, feeling that we were going for. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, I've got another question here. This one's from Kieran Free. It says, Hi Jamie, how do you think your music has adapted and progressed throughout your career? Um, I, try not to, I try not to think about that at all. Um, I just think about what I'm doing now, really. I'm, I'm, I'm really bad at thinking about it more uh, uh, in a bigger way like that. But I guess if I had to think about it, I would say I've, 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 I'm a better musician and I'm a better, a better piano player, I'm a better songwriter, and I'm a better singer than I was when I started. Um, just in a kind of pure technical way. Um, but what's interesting about doing this record now, Interlude, which, as I've said, you know, it's a, it's a jazz record. It's definitely, a lot of my records have, have felt like they're more uh, lots of different things in one record. You know, a mixture of pop and jazz and rock and all those other things that I like. This is the first album I've made since Heard It All Before, um, which is the very first album I made um, in, in an afternoon uh, with my own money and sold it out of the back of my car. Um, where I just focused on the kind of jazz aspect of it. Um, and it's taken me a while to come back around to wanting to do that. Um, because I think for a while I didn't... I was quite conscious of not being pigeonholed in one way. And I wanted an opportunity to, sh to show my songwriting and an opportunity to uh, use the, the palette that all these other genres give you the opportunity of using. Um, but, you know, kind of 10, 12 years on from having a record deal, I just felt like... it. it just felt like the right time to make a jazz record, particularly after doing the radio show now for four years and just how much jazz I'm listening to recently, how much influence I am by jazz again. Um, I really wanted to make this record, so um, I don't know whether that means in terms of progressing, but I think it probably means that I'm just more confident about making decisions that are just about what I want to hear and what I, what I feel I've, I've got ready to say rather than thinking about the whole kind of grand plot of where my career is going. Hope that answers your question. Certainly doesn't if I was asking it, but maybe you enjoyed it. Okay, I have a question here from Leonardo from Brazil. He says, hey Jamie, I'd like to know if you still have ambitions in your career, like having number one songs and albums, for example, or if you just want to keep making good music and don't really worry about much else. Well, one per part of that is definitely true. Um, Leonardo, I, I I guess my only ambition is to continue to make 
good music and music that I feel is truthful to what I want to do. Um, but God, yeah, I'd, I'd love a, <laughs> I'd love a number one album and a number one song. Um, but not, um, not if that means sacrificing doing what is from my heart. I think, you know, the idea of a song being number one, whatever that means anymore, or an album being number one, whatever that means anymore. Um, it, it could only happen and I would only be able to feel good about it if I carried on doing what I was doing anyway, which was just making music that I was proud of and that I felt, felt was, was real and honest to me. Um, and the other thing is that I guess whether I have an album out or not, uh, and wherever it is, wherever it lands in the charts, again, whatever that means these days, it doesn't have effect on, on gigs. You guys still turn up to see me. Um, and I still kind of carry on gigging at all times. So I just, my main ambition is to be able to keep it going for a long time, is longevity. I really love playing, I really love making music, and I'm able to do that because you guys come and see me. So that is my main ambition. But above and beyond that, I just like to be a better musician. Um, I'm around musicians of amazing ability at all times, and they inspire me to be better and better. So um, practice, practice, practice. Uh, Holly Spate, here's a question from her. She says, how does interlude differ from momentum? Um, well, they are very different. Um, the intention is the same. The intention of you know, making a, an album of songs that uh, present a whole picture and present something truthful and meaningful to me. But other than that, you know, I worked with one producer on the entire album, which I haven't done since 20-something. Um, and... Uh, you know, this is very much me wanting to make a jazz record, so um, I'm not playing piano on all these songs as well. I've surrounded myself with musicians that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, I've got Nostalgia 77 uh, and uh, the band and, and Ben Lambden to produce it, and we recorded in one studio over a very short space of time. And That wasn't to save money, it's just uh, sometimes these great records that I love are made in one place in a short space of time to capture a moment. Um, all live takes, very little, if none at all, editing, and it was all recorded on reel-to-reel -reel analog tape as well. So, um, you know, momentum, uh, parts of momentum were recorded like that, but I think when you make a record that is more pieced together in that way, you, you, you naturally kind of do it incrementally and work on tracks a bit, add bits, take bits away, and work out what works best for certain tracks. But with a record like this, you get it down, you get the performance, and you move on, and hopefully you create something classic. And I've got to say, uh, you know, listening back to this record, um, something about not labouring over it too much makes you feel more in love with it than other things you've done that you perhaps laboured over a lot more because you never had time to fall out of love with it. So, hope that answers your question. Here is a question from Andreas Ebert Karum. He says, whose idea was it to work with Gregory Porter? Well. Uh, you know, that was, that was my idea. Um, a lot of the idea for this album was born out of the fact that I have a radio show on BBC Radio 2. Um, and I've been doing that I've been doing that for a while now, and I, I was the first person to play Gregory Porter on the radio. On my show, I, I, I heard some of his tracks, and um, no one had played him before over here in the UK, so um, I played and played and played his tracks. I played them a lot. People thought I was on the Gregory Porter pl uh, payroll. Um, but uh, I'm just a big fan of his, and um, it turned out he uh, knew me and was a, uh, a fan of my work as well. He, he came and sang Gran Torino with me, he did a session for my radio show. Um, I invited him to Cheltenham Jazz Festival, we became friends. And uh, it just seemed natural, you know, if this uh, album interlude is a celebration of jazz and a celebration of my radio show and um, a, a collaboration with other musicians, um, then it was absolutely natural in my mind, to get Gregory to sing on this record. The, the tricky part was getting him uh, at a moment where he was free, because he's so busy now, because he's really uh, become really popular, which I'm, I'm so happy about. So, But we managed to get in the studio with him, and we did it, and it sounds great. I've got a question now from Jan Van Bellen. He says, is this album an interlude, something in between? Um, you know, in some ways it is. Uh, it's a cheeky title, even though it's the title of one of the tracks anyway. Because um, 
I made I made this album quite differently to other albums I've made recently. I made it very quickly, recorded most of it live in one studio, um, in in kind of live takes like like an old jazz record, um, and you know when when I finished it, you know finished mixing it with Ben Landon the producer, uh, I've kind of already started working on the next one album uh, that comes after this about halfway through it which again is probably more of a you describe it as kind of cross genre kind of record you know it definitely starts as a jazz record and has elements of pop and rock and all those other kind of genres that I normally dip into so um, Interlude feels like it's going to be a series of collaborations with jazz records and collaborations with great people I meet and choosing uh, uh, songs from the kind of classic songbook and I feel like there's a volume two in us pretty soon, so um, it feels like an interlude, but it's going to be a long and fruitful one. Uh, this is a question from Peter Nick. It says, if you were to call this album 30-something, haven't heard that one before, uh, what would it be that makes it different to 20-something? Uh, this is... Um, 20 something was one of those kind of once in a lifetime records. I don't think I could make it again. You know, it came out at a time when I was new to many, to pretty much everyone. Um, and it was obviously very popular quite quickly. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the everything from the repertoire choice to the original songs, it was all very fresh and to me. And, um, very kind of unselfconscious. I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know four million people would listen to it. You know, it was it was made for me and the people I knew in in some ways. Um, but you know, if you fast forward uh, five albums later to something like Interlude, um, Interlude is actually in a lot of ways a very un self-conscious record as well um, because it was made. When I didn't have a record deal, um, I do, again, I, I re-signed my record deal, but at the time, I just wanted to collaborate with this guy, Ben Lambden. I just wanted to make just wanted to make some music with him. There was no major agenda at the time when we walked into the studio, apart from that we wanted to record some great songs and gather together some great musicians. Um, and I don't think I could make 20-something now, but I don't think I could make, I could have made Interlude then. Um, there's a certain confidence that comes from obviously being a bit older but also being a more experienced musician and just jumping in there with a bunch of musicians I didn't know so well who I'm very much a fan of um, I feel like I'm very much able to take more risks and you know risk in some ways is following an album like Momentum up with an album like Interlude uh, and then following up Interlude with whatever my next record's going to be which is it's going to be uh, interesting again, but um, I guess for people that have always liked my more kind of straighter jazzer side, jazzier side, then this is uh, very much a link to that, very much uh, an echo of 20-something in that way, and very much an echo of the albums that came before that as well, Pointless Nostalgic and heard it all before. So in some ways it's a return to that sound, but um, it's moved on, as, as of course things always do. Um, I guess the sound, you know, more like more like someone who's a bit more comfortable in his own skin, as you should do, in your thirties. I kind of answered that question for myself as well. I hope it answered it for you. Here's a question from Delphine Debacca. She says, "Hi Jamie, what three words come to mind when describing the album?" By the way, I'm seeing you tonight in Antwerp. Ah, you're coming tonight. Okay, cool. Um, what three words come to mind when describing Interlude? Uh, one. Um, you know, uh, jazz, uh, I know that probably sounds weird, but um, this is the, uh, I haven't made an album for some time which uh, really uh, stays in the world of jazz for, for, for the entire record. It, all, all the songs, touchstones, every single song, the touchstones are, are related to a particular area of jazz that I love or an artist that I love, whether it's John and Alice Coltrane or Nina Simone or Billie Holiday, all harks back to, to uh, uh, a, a different artist and a, a different something that I'm into every track. So jazz is one. Live would be another. We recorded this record live to analog tape. Um, and um, 
third one would be um, joy. I think joy is a good word because this album was made before I knew it was going to be an album. I just wanted to collaborate with this guy, Ben, that I met through doing my radio show. Um, I just wanted to make a record with him. I wanted to inhabit his world that he's created uh, with this group, Nostalgia 77. And um, we didn't have any plans for it at all. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to come out on my record label. I, I didn't know what was going to become of it. We just went in and uh, wanted to, to, to make something that we loved. Um, so jazz, life and joy. That's three, right?